Good morning. We're back to a driveway workout. We're much thicker than we were maybe six months ago. I need to do the functional work. The functional work is important. I said I was gonna do it, kind of just full dove straight face, face first into thick boy season. After so long, I kind of realized, Seth, you can't neglect the thick, you can't neglect the driveway workouts, the functional work, super important. Uh, so here we are this morning. We had to shoot some content for the new AAR drop we have coming up with the new pump cover, the new athletic training shorts. Again, fellas, if you don't know, like a great teaser dick pic happens in the compression shorts. I'm not gonna show you mine, but nice. It's a good look, that's all I'm saying. I have gained probably about, I was 222 and a half uh, two days ago, first thing in the morning. So I've gained, you know, about a good solid 10 to 12 pounds over the past eight weeks. Um, I like being big, I'm much stronger. However, uh, I can't neglect the functional work and the weather's starting to change a little bit. It's getting a little warmer out and I'm like, man, I gotta stay in, I gotta stay in shape. So back to keeping it simple. And we are just getting ready to launch the HWMF Transformation Challenge. So get your asses in shape. We're doing a six weeks six week challenge. It ends right before Memorial Day weekend. So the goal is to get everybody in shape by June 1st. That way you can take your shirt off for the summer and you're good. Six weeks to getting in shape. Functional work has done so much for me in my life. Getting back to it. So this morning, we're gonna do five work rounds. I'm gonna do one warm up, but five work rounds where I'm gonna go up the driveway. I'm gonna do 25 push ups in one round, up the driveway, 25 push ups, 25 sit ups, 10 rows, and then uh, I'll probably do a 30 second plank. And then I was also gonna do some grip work on grip strength. I think that's important. We're always amazed that whenever you can see like a kid, like a toddler, hang from a bar and then pull themselves up. We're like, oh my God, look at this kid. He can just hang there. He's fucking two. And little fucking hands hanging onto something. And you're like, how the fuck is he so strong? And then when you see like a 70 year old fucking do a pull up, everybody's like completely blown away and amazed that the 70 year old could just do a chin up for a 60. And you're like, holy fuck, that old guy's jacked. Like, uh, I think it's important to work on some of those functional exercises and even just Grabbing onto the pull-up bar and hanging there for 60 seconds. You hang there for 60 seconds, you got some shit. So, really simple though. We'll work up a sweat, up the driveway, we'll take the bag, uh, the 50 pound sack, up the driveway five times. I won't run with it, it'll just be a brisk walk up the hill. Keep it simple, simple and effective. Get your heart rate up, your breathing techniques, and just rip through it. Put on good tunes, I don't got the tunes this morning, I like the birds chirping. I don't need nothing in my head. Fucking mayhem in my life pretty much every day and this kind of just lets it go. So I'm just gonna soak it up. Do a good job. Nothing is real. 
Put on the extra weight, I feel it. This is fun though, I like this. My 10 year old daughter, Emmy, she just turned 10. Big gymnastics, everybody knows that. Uh, if you don't, Emmy is a very good gymnast. She's a level seven, she just won states. Hannah and I, we're a typical couple, parents, love our kids, but you know, we always, we, we do a great job together, but we still have our challenges whenever it comes to raising your kids. We were talking about how Emmy leveling up in gymnastics and the different things going through, and uh, I was like, man, she, you know, just a, you know, push her, and you know, she needs to work harder. She's like, Seth, Emmy doesn't quite understand, like, she's a child. She doesn't quite understand, like, the hard work aspect, because Emmy is very naive and innocent and sweet, but she's just insanely talented and driven. She loves gymnastics i was like you know she should just work harder you know do this do that like hard working motherfucker and uh and i was like she doesn't understand that concept she doesn't understand the value of hard work she just knows that going in and doing gymnastics something that she absolutely fucking loves the more she does the better she gets she loves it she loves to compete she loves the pressure it's fucking crazy so the reason i'm telling this story is is Hannah brought to the concept that it's actually what she loves to do. She likes gymnastics. She likes six hour long practice. She loves it. And then in my head, I'm like, oh my God, there are certain things in my life that I absolutely love that are like hard work. This sweating first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, that brutal workout, fucking nasty training sessions. 150s for fucking sets of eight and drop set to the fucking until you can't move anymore. Like crazy intense fucking training. I love it. I love fucking cutting grass. I like splitting wood. Like these are things that I love to do, but they're a lot of hard work. And in my life, I've turned myself the hard working motherfucker because whatever it is I'm going to do, I'm just going to work really hard at it. But it kind of just dawned on me at that moment that that's exactly what we're all doing. We love this shit. We love working hard. We like strenuous activity. We like sweating. We like nasty workouts. We like wild, intense, hard shit. Because if we don't do it, we don't, we're not ourselves. We're off. We're dickheads. They're, we're missing that aspect of life. We like that. We love it. And I'm like, Holy fuck. That's what's so funny about being a meathead. We're still like children. Like Emmy, who doesn't even understand that a six, seven, eight hour long practice is absolutely brutal, but she's not looking at it like that. She's like, I love this shit so much that is the more I do it, the better I get, the better I feel. Which is exactly what we do. Because if I don't do my morning cardio, if I don't get a good sweat in, I'm not the best version of myself. And it's crazy that me being so insightful in life and terming myself the hardworking motherfucker, it's actually me just loving life. And watching Emmy do that, like, dude, that kid works her fucking ass off, but she doesn't even understand that. It's not, it doesn't click because she's a child. It's just what she loves to do. And I find it to be very cool that no matter how old I get or how insightful or thoughtful I am, 
there's still so much to learn and benefit from just experiencing life. I need to do more of these. I think you could do both. I know that I feel better when I'm in shape, like really good shape, like good cardiovascular shape. And in the beginning, I was breathing heavier in the beginning of this workout than I am right now. So it's like, it's gotta get the motor started. There's probably some type of fucking scientific term for that, but I like being in shape makes me feel good and you know I didn't do anything too crazy today this is simple basic shit it's like my chest workout incline dumbbell presses incline flies pec deck dips cable crossovers <laughs> take the bag carry it up the fucking hill do push-ups do sit-ups pull-ups do some rows really simple basic things get the heart rate up um, Oh, that's good. It's good. The simple basic shit works really fucking well. And the more that you get used to doing them, the more intense you can become with these. Like instead of just taking the 50 up, you can take the 100. Instead of just walking briskly up the hill with the 50, you can fucking get, you know, a little bit of a jog going. Work into it all. The simple basic shit done very intensely, <laughs> it, it will fucking work. You don't gotta get too crazy with everything. Okay, USA. It's on the list, dude, you gotta watch it. Bloodsport. If you were ever wondering why an entire generation of men, like a 10 to 15 year sp right. span of men, like me and my age, like, I'd probably say like 30, or, ah, 33 to 35. What year were you born? I was born in 84, okay. so I'll be 40 this year. Up to like 45, 50, I'd probably say 35 to 50. All men, all men in there are very similar in certain thought processes of being a manly man. It's because of those fucking movies. Yeah. The 80s and Raised 90s. Raised on them. Oh, bro. If you, dude, all of us. I mean, like, I can name off guys that I do not converse with very often. But, like, it's a movie connection with them because I see them posted. I'm like, you grew up in the same time period yep. as me. David Bay, one of them. Dude, dude massive uh, movie buff. But I'm like, this is, we're all the same. Like the reason I'm bringing it up, blood sport. If I, if a guy, 35 to 50, if I bring up Frank Dukes, blood sport, John Claude Van Damme, 1989. Like, dude, the Kumite. Like, yeah, dude. Commando with Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. is literally the movie that I was watching whenever I was a chubby kid. My nickname was Chubbs growing up. I was, uh, I was eating a bag of Snyder's barbecue potato chips and flicked through the channels and Commando was there and I saw him carrying the fucking log on his shoulder in the beginning of the movie. He had a, he had a tank top on, a white beater with a flannel under his shoulder and he was carrying a fucking log looking jacked as fuck. And I'm like, I want to be him when I grow up. Bet you set that pretzel right down. Yep, them chips Started got them all. chips. That's literally what clicked in my head of being like, I want to look, I want to be like this dude. I mean, I may have went a little too far in my life <laughs> but dude that movie was like i was like because at that time i was starting to go through puberty and the girls in the neighborhood that all uh, everyone hung out together like my nickname was chubbs like that's what everybody called me so then i started the girls started calling me chubbs and i was like fuck you no it was like not gonna happen was arnold a, a guy back then that girls wanted to be with or not really i mean in my head i thought so you're like muscles equals yeah muscles equal pussy what turned out was muscles equal more dudes looking at you being like how'd you get so jacked bro like DMs, it's bro. it's still the same shit today <laughs> like like 
You're just like, man, look how good, look how, look how good he looks <laughs> in the most non-gay way. But like, dude, for example, like, yeah, bro, your dick looks good in the AR so fucking shorts. Yeah, for her, but then also <laughs> I'm at the same time, like, there's probably some homosexual underlying tone with the '80s and '90s of all of us, like in all the dude movies. <laughs> Won't you come and wash away the rain and black all the sun? Won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? Stood a ring, cold and damp, steal the warm winds. Good times. Okay, so, video wouldn't be complete without me selling something, right? As some of you like to fuck with me in the comments, yeah, he's doing this because he went to sell shit. Yeah, of course. We have a company, we have a ton of supporters, and I love all the support. However, we have, we do have an AAR release coming up. That's our apparel brand, All American Roughneck. Um, April 18th. Now, we have a lot of really cool shit for sale. The pump cover, the Thick Boy U, Jam Jacked and Juicy Plus, Plush hoodies, all beautiful, really nice. We have a fucking windbreaker rain, rain, rain jacket that is sick. <clears throat> but the reason I'm bringing this up is um, I talk a massive game about being a hardworking motherfucker, about being a good motherfucker and doing good in your community. And you don't have problems, just more work to do. Now, whenever I say you don't have problems, just more work to do, Monday's not a problem. Um, you know, Sunday scaries and going to your job and making money. Uh, those, that's not a real problem, dude. That's just work. We all got to work. A problem is whenever someone comes down with a debilitating disease, um, you know, kids that have come out with cancer at three, four, five, six, seven years old, they die before they're supposed to die. You're not supposed to die when you're young. Like, that, that's a fucking problem. Whenever you have a problem, like, shit happens in life, and that's when you know, like, that's whenever that problem that arose in your life Mondays, you wish Mondays was your problem. You wish you could feel Sunday scaries again and not the pressure and the intensity of that problem at hand of someone in your life passing earlier or, or a serious issue coming about. Now, I'm bringing that up because, uh, you know, if you guys don't know, back in, I grew up in a Catholic school. I went to Catholic school growing up. I lost my faith because some crazy shit happened at that place that uh, I just kind of drove me away from it. Now, I've always been a decent human being. However, just recently, whenever I went to Idaho for my last hunt, the whole entire experience out there just had came over a, a whole different emotion in life of being like, man, I, I, I have everything that a grown man could ever dream of. I'm very grateful for it. I'm thankful for it. And Zach, the guy that Zach Owens, the guy that I go hunting with every year, he's an incredibly faithful person. Now, Zach, he's crazy, he's a wild man, but he is an incredibly good human being. And whenever I came home, I just had this, I had a newfound faith and started reading the Bible and, and doing more research about everything and just things that could help bring light to my life. And I came across a, uh, came across a verse, the second book of Thessalonians, chapter three, verse 10. And it states, the one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. Now, I've never heard of that Bible verse before. It never clicked with me, but I found it kind of uh, ironic and unique that that's something that I preach in my life. That's something that you don't have problems, just more work to do. It's just work. If you can work, you should work. If you don't, you don't get to reap the benefits of work. You can't be an entitled individual. The reason I'm showing you this shirt is, is because this is gonna be our charity shirt for this release. All of the profits from this t-shirt will be going to the My360 Project. The My360 Project is a, uh, his mission work that Zach Owens is a massive part of. Um, what they do is they go down into, uh, very poor parts of the entire world, uh, Mexico, Africa, all over the world, and they build shoes for children that don't have shoes. Uh, it is something that I've donated to Zach uh, in years past in private of just saying, yeah, I, I give him 
I send money to the charity and then he goes and does the mission work down in Mexico and then over in Africa. Uh, and when we were out hunting in Idaho in September, he was talking a lot about it after, you know, we were discussing the hunt and how awesome it was. And he's like, I want you to go. You're going to go. I want you, if we're going to keep doing these hunts and, and this type of experience is going to change your life. He says, I think it'd be good for you to experience it all. And I said, yeah, let's do it. With who we are as a brand and as much shit as I talk about all the things I do, and I put my money where my mouth is by donating money to charities and doing all those things. But it's time for more than that. Uh, it's going to be me actually going down to Mexico uh, with him and Ryan, who we go hunting with. It's Zach, Zach Owens, myself, Ryan Osbach, and the My360 Project, we're going down to Mexico on April 25th to build shoes for less fortunate children who do not have shoes or are not as fortunate as some in the world are. The entire releases that we do at All American Roughneck have our mindset behind them. Uh, being good motherfuckers. Living with passion. You don't have problems, just more work to do. You have children, lead by example. You don't have to be perfect because ain't nobody perfect. Whenever you have the opportunity to work and you're able-bodied and you got it, you should. Because there's some people out there that don't have those same opportunities. And every single chance that we get as a company to donate to certain things like that, we did it with uh, the HWMF Foundation for Princess Zoe. You guys helped us raise over $100,000 for that young girl and her family. Uh, Rescue 22 for Kelsey. This is something that I'm pretty passionate about. I'm going to become a pretty big part of. So, if you don't buy anything else, buy the shirt, wear it with pride. Uh, some people were a little indifferent about the Bible or faith. Um, you don't have to fully consume yourself into it to become a Bible thumping uh, person. This is something that there is a whole lot of people behind it. Don't be too proud to, do, to wear something like this or kind of uh, 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 just ex start to experience it. Read the Bible. Feel it. Look for things to help you become a better person because rather than expecting all, you have to immerse yourself in every single bit of it. You can't just dive headfirst into something and expect it to overtake you. No, little by little is okay. Feeling it, understanding it, listening. You know, you, you, you can't just understand the whole entire world or the whole entire book or the whole entire anything within one day or one week. It's a lifetime. And I, I personally am a very fortunate man. I have everything a, a grown man could ever dream of. I have a beautiful family that loves me. I have uh, multiple companies that, that make lots of money. I have 40 plus employees. I have something that in every aspect of my life people would dream of having a family that loves you, three happy, healthy, beautiful children, a woman that is infatuated with me, loves me, and makes me feel like a wonderful person, and I do the same for her by supporting her and loving her. I have companies. If you had a company that made millions of dollars, it'd be, it's like, dude, you don't got any problems. Just do your work, dude. Look how what you have, how special it is. I have employees that respect me as an owner and as a friend to be to know that I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that they have opportunity in life and I'm going to help grow my business to help them grow their opportunities and their dreams of what they want to do. There's not one aspect of my life that I look at and I can't say how grateful I am for it. And looking at that and how can I experience more. How can I, what, what more could I do? What, what can I do to elevate myself? And it doesn't have to do with anything of making more money. It has to do with giving back. It has to do with uh, creating something that I, I don't fully understand yet, maybe. So thank you guys for all the support with the companies. Please come whenever you purchase uh, anything from us. Axe and Sledge, All American Roughneck, Just Work Energy. You guys aren't giving, I'm not taking your money and putting it into my pocket. We are growing an empire here. We have a ton of phenomenal people. Nothing would make me more proud in my life than to create something within the community that people are proud to be a part of and grow it bigger. Instead of having 43 employees, have 86.
double the company, grow in size, create opportunity for people. And all of the stores that purchase from us, that carry Axe and Sledge, all of you that are buying this apparel, that are going into stores and buying Axe and Sledge in a store, you're not only supporting Axe and Sledge, you're also supporting the store itself. That fucking store in your community that is there, that is buying real estate, having a presence, employing people, like, it's a massive deal. So, uh, I'm grateful for it all. And I realized that, uh, you know, like I said earlier, the, the work, it's work. It is a lot of work, but it's fun. Like, I don't know what else I'd be doing. I enjoy it. Is there stress involved? Sure, there's stress involved. But I tell you what, the stress that, that this is, um, I get to do it with young Aiden, Bob, Shane, Gino. I get to do it with people that also want to do really cool shit. And I'm not worried about, like, some of the things in the previous horrible experiences I had in my life with, with drugs and ad addiction and really intense fucked up shit. So April 18th, this shirt goes live. 100% of the pro hundred percent of the profits goes towards the My360 project. The link is in the bio. If you just want to, if you don't want to buy anything and you just want to go donate two bucks, three bucks, five bucks, 10 bucks, 50 bucks, 20 bucks. You want to make a big donation, make a big donation. Every bit counts for something like this. So this year, uh, we're going to be going to, like I said, April 25th, we leave for Mexico. Uh, we'll be there for four days. Me, Zach, Ryan, uh, the My360 Project. And then later in the year, Zach is going to be going to Uganda um, to do it over there as well. So very intense, very grateful to be a part of it. Thank you guys. Keep doing a good job. Don't do anything dumb. And make sure you let your woman know that you love her. Have a good one.